for Mike, well, you played and won the Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. You understand this pressure that he was under, unlike any of the viewing audience. Mm -hmm. Can you explain it to us? Well, look, it's pressure you put on yourself. All great athletes do it, and uh, you have to accept that that is part of your job, and you go through it. But all great athletes still go through these troubling times. You know, our 12th hole might have been game five here. Where we were expected to win. We thought we were going to win, and we didn't win. We didn't deliver, but you have to come back, and he'll come back. He's an amazing player. I mean, to put himself in that position shows a lot of consistency. But does it show, like, a breaking point? In other words, when something goes bad, mm -hmm. a, a cascading domino effect. Well, we were just talking about that. You know, one bad shot can lead to four other bad shots, and that's where experience. Don't forget how young he is, but that's where experience and what made great players great, uh, whether it's Tiger Woods or 86, you know, um, Jack Nicklaus winning the Masters. Mm -hmm. You're going to have those bad shots, and how do you recover from them? And he did that through the tournament. He, he had did. bad shots and recovered, but that one was a little bit late to have a really big meltdown, and, and it, it, you know, there's a kind of a cascading effect, but you know, anybody who's ever played that sport in particular can, yeah. can relate. It's there's a, there's a physical and a mental aspect to it, more, more so than almost any other sport. Yeah. Uh, he led for, you know, two years, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, seven rounds. He set all kinds of records. Do you think he'll get better for this? Because we've seen meltdowns yeah. like this yeah. uh, from golfers in the past that I've forgotten their names now. Yeah, no, no <laughs> that's a very good point. But you do not play sports. You don't get through life. You don't play the game of golf without having whether it's a meltdown or just, you know, you get your backside handed to you sometime. Yeah. We didn't make the playoffs in 93. We won the President Trophy Stanley Cup in 94. So uh, you will go through adversity. That's his. That's 22 years old. Everyone's got to tip their hat to him. Yeah. The way he handled it was phenomenal. Yeah, he I think he'll come the, back. Yeah, yeah. and he, he had a great interview, and he's yeah. a very gracious guy. I want to talk now about your, your charity sure. the, and, and the event for, for kids' cancer sure. that you're, you're involved with. Yeah, this is an easy one. I was asked to just present the, uh, represent the, uh, the Great Cycling Challenge. And uh, really what you're doing is it's not a single-day event like a marathon, which are great things, but this is across the month of June. Registration starts now, and whether you're on a bike outside or in a spinning class inside, the miles that you produce, you get sponsored. Hopefully you have some rich uncles that will throw some good cash per mile. Can I do my exercise bike at home? <laughs> you can. <laughs> or sponsor me. You don't even have to sweat. Really? Uh, but, no, you actually you can do that. And it's, it's, it's hooked up. There's a free app to Strava and Map My Ride and all this kind of stuff. The point is you use the social media to have the competition and the, the, the pride of doing a great thing. And all this money goes to the Children's Cancer Research Fund, which is a big deal. Last year, $1.7 million raised. This year, trying to do 2.2. Wow, that so is cool that's stuff. a beautiful thing. That is really cool. So 1.4 million miles cumulatively last year, over 12,000 people. We hope to double that this year. We'll see. I'm pretty Amazing. sure they will with your involvement. Now, something that was a little less cool, uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. trying to get through the turnstiles. Yeah. Was the media too tough on her, uh, you know? Uh, I, I can tell you I have a very good perspective on this because I have lived in New York on and off uh, my, basically in my whole adult life. I don't know if there's a worse turnstiler than me. <laughs> <laughs> And unlike Hillary, I get that thing in the groin every time. Yeah. There's 15 people behind me. I'm going, what just happened? And there's arrows, and I'm looking at it yeah, and, and keep doing it until, you know. The, and New Yorkers are a pretty patient lot. They, they really enjoy that when they're running to work and do the hang-up. So, no, I think uh, in a way it was a perfect New York moment. Good, yeah, cool. Before I let you go, overall world of sports, media, you know, it feels like uh, it doesn't resonate the way it did. Do you think the golden age of sports is over or just sort of a reset? You know, these guys make so much money. I yeah. think a lot of people feel not in touch with them the way they could, you know. It is difficult because it almost seems like a different class all of a sudden. But, you know, it's, it's hard for me to say that, too. I am a fan. I look at it. But I also see the guys in the locker room. I know these guys, and they're great human beings for the most part. I mean, I'm just drawing on my experience. Right. tough to generalize like that. But I think in the end, the players play it as the, for the same reasons the fans watch it. They love the game. Right. And you can't play this game unless you have some kind of work ethic. Mike, thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. All right. Hey, uh,